So, Overwatch 2 came out this year. Oh, yes. Overwatch 2. So, Overwatch was a game that released in, I believe, 2016. Mm -hmm. And the premise of that game is that there's six players on one team versus six players on the other team. Yes. They're all actual people playing, essentially. So, you and five friends or five random people try and accomplish an objective while six other people you don't know try and prevent you from achieving that objective. Mm -hmm. And it's just a fun game where it's like a, a push and pull, tug of war kind of thing. Yeah. You're trying to achieve an objective. Someone's trying to stop you from doing that. And the characters are wonderful. Like That's the biggest draw of that game is there are so many fun characters in that game. Ever since that game came out in 2016, they also released a bunch of new characters. You know, Every three months, they would come up with a brand new character. And it would be a lot of fun to play these games with all these awesome characters, which all have amazing voice work. They're visually striking. It's it's just a fun game. The, the game is a it's a it's a fun team based shooter. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. And uh, you played it a bit too back in 2016, 2017. Yeah, I, I remember playing the beta of that game. You got that in was, on it before. I, that was that was why I was I actually like bought the game is because I played the beta and I had a lot of fun playing it. And I didn't really know much about it. it wasn't even on my radar until you gifted to it gifted it to me a year later. Mm -hmm. So on the end of the one year anniversary of the game, you gifted me a copy and. Uh, it became basically the game I would just go back to every day. Mm -hmm. I, I would play like an hour or two of it every day. It was just my go-to game to unwind, which is kind of weird because the game can be kind of stressful at times. Yeah, I I had to stop playing it. Uh, I played it for like two or three years and I had to stop playing it because of my greatest enemy, the meta, <laughs> which I must, I must strive to defeat with every ounce of my being. Once people start talking about the meta of a game and they start balancing characters to make them more playable for PvP, that I, I'm done. I'm done. I hate it. Yeah. That became a problem for a lot of people where some characters were notoriously... They were poorly received. Uh, there was a character called Symmetra and uh, at back, at the back at the time, I believe a character called Torbjorn. And if you were playing those characters, people were like, oh, I guess we're not winning this game. Yep. Uh, we got this character on this team. This uh, Our teammate is playing this character. I guess we're not going to win this game. It would just ruin the experience. One of the big jokes when I when I was playing it was uh, when you were in a game, if there was a Bastion on your team, it was the first person to type in chat in before Bastion play of the game. Because Bastion would always get play of the game. Oh, okay. Yeah, he, the, when I was when I first started playing this game back when it first came out, Bastion always got play of the game because he has a machine gun he's, and he can kill multiple people. He can output a lot of damage. Yes. Yeah. I stopped playing the game right when what, what is Torbjorn's daughter's name? Uh, Brigitta. I stopped playing the game right or a while after Brigitta came out, and they had basically nerfed Mercy into being unplayable. Yeah, they uh, they were always balancing things, changing things up, trying to rework characters, trying to make the game more enjoyable. I had stopped playing because Brigitta was broken to the point of, if there was a Brigitta on the enemy team, you're not going to win. Mm -hmm. If there's a Brigitta on the enemy team and you don't also have a Brigitta, you will not win. Yeah. And that there there have been a couple of characters like that where some characters are just overtuned and... It doesn't really matter what you do. You need to have somebody on your team who can play that character. And whoever yep. plays that character better is the team that wins. Well, and I had stopped playing because they they nerfed Mercy so hard. They changed her entire kit. So she was not... Playing Mercy was not the character that I remember playing Mercy as. Yeah, they basically reworked a lot of characters to have different move sets. And because, Mercy was one of them, yeah. Because, because some people were like, LMAO Battle Mercy... Anyway, I'm sorry. We got off topic of, of Overwatch. Keep We could still talk about it. Uh, you don't like the way that some characters were changed, but I would say almost every iteration of a character being reworked improved them. They reworked a couple characters. And no, I disagree with you. They killed Mercy. They ruined her. They made Mercy better. No, they ruined her. Some people would disagree. Yeah, that's, that's a fair... You're Mercy was better when she was like the healer from TF2. Yeah, she still is. Although they did reduce her healing output, and that may have frustrated... Well, for God's sake! I thought that's what you were getting upset about. No, oh, they, did they... Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you said they reduced it again. No, I, I thought... I think when she came out, she was healing 60 a second. Now she did 50 or 55. They reduced it a little bit. The thing I was really mad about was her... Her res that did everybody? Her ability that resurrected every character that was down on your team in a radius. Within range, yeah. Yeah. They removed that and replaced it with, like, a... a like... Five minute cooldown res, which it took forever to get to that point. Thirty seconds, but it does feel like forever. It took for it took forever to get to that point, and then by the time you got it, you were already getting murdered. 
Mm -hmm. You're very vulnerable when trying to use that ability, yes. That's the thing is they do constantly update the characters, not just balance-wise, but they also try and change the character to be more enjoyable. And uh, sometimes it doesn't always work if you had a particular affinity for that character's playstyle. I know <laughs> you bring up Mercia, but I remember your original, com original complaint was about Symmetra, who had an auto lock on beam and you didn't have to have great tracking to play that character. Then they changed your weapon and you had to, it, it was like a hit scan ability. You had to like focus your laser directly on the enemy. You couldn't let the weapon aim itself. You I had hated that change. Yeah, a lot of people did. That was a really stupid change. Because that, that was like right as I had just started playing Symmetra. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I can't play Mercy anymore. I guess I'll try playing Symmetra. And I started playing as her and I had a lot of fun playing as her. And then it was like, oh, oh, no, fun's allowed. No, you can't have fun. <laughs> they rebalanced that character because the auto locking on ability was very strong on the low ranks. But she wasn't getting any playtime for mid rank or high rank characters. And again, that drives me absolutely nuts. That they balance stuff because, oh, well, it's not being played. The the top 1% of this game, the top 1% of players don't like her. So we're going to ruin it for the other 99% of players. I, I believe your complaint has some merit, I, although I don't always agree with it. I do think, for the most part, the balance changes have been positive. And when you dropped out of it back around 2018, 2019, yeah, they were still doing some frustrating changes. But actually, around like 2021... They, they actually balanced the game well. The downside was they, they were balancing the game well because they had stopped releasing content. They yeah. basically just gone to like hunker down maintenance mode around 2020. They decided to hold back all of the content. They not release anything new. And because there were no new heroes coming out, no new things coming out. They didn't have to keep rebalancing shit. Yeah, they basically found a really nice sweet spot with all the characters. No character was insanely broken. So that would have been the time for me to start playing it was then. Yeah. And... uh yeah, back when that game came out, you and I were playing it, and we had fun with it. I made some videos on the channel. I made a lot of videos for Overwatch on the channel. I had a lot of fun with that game. But I eventually decided not to do any more videos on the channel because the company that makes that game, Activision Blizzard, started behaving really scummy. Yeah, they've been... They've been very scummy. They, which, don't, they don't deserve free advertising from this channel. Yeah. To get off on a slight tangent, I loved Diablo 3. Diablo 3 was great. That's like one of my favorite... One of my favorite games. I don't normally like those type of games, but man, I love Diablo 3. I basically exclusively played Demon Hunter. I had an absolute blast playing that game. Mm. I was really excited for Diablo 4. I am not excited for Diablo 4 anymore. Like, yeah. I really don't care. Mm -hmm. if, if Diablo 4 is great, cool, maybe I'll play it. If Diablo 4 is shit, cool, I'm never going to play it. Mm -hmm. Like, I... The company is so tainted, you mean? The company has... Yeah, the company is so tainted. And I realized that it's not everybody at the company. And there's a very specific team that was working on that. But there was a whole business with Diablo Immortal. Mm -hmm. Of the, what, you guys don't have fun. All anybody wanted, when they announced Diablo Immortal, the only thing Diablo fans wanted was Diablo 4. Give us Diablo... We just want Diablo 4. And then you, guys, you guys take like 20 years in between Diablo games. Please just give us Diablo 4. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're making a mobile game that you have to spend literally $500,000 to max level your character. Yeah. It's it's not $500,000. It's a lot of money. It's, a stu it's a, an amount of money that nobody should actually pay. Or it's like 100 years of playing the game in order to get it for free. Pay or grind, that's your choice. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So now I'm, now I'm not excited for Diablo 4. And the problem is that even though Diablo Immortals, the game that no one wanted... Even though it's out and people hate it, it's what makes the most money. It still makes money. It makes money hand over people fist. People still, which is why when when games like that come out and people are like, hey, are you going to play this game? No, I'm not. Because I don't want to give them a mod. I don't even want to give them advertising that I'm playing that game. Right. Free advertising? It's, no. It's one of those things, don't, like, don't even. I'm not even going to talk about it. It's like when people when people are like, oh, I rage watched the, cow, the, the Netflix Cowboy Bebop. Why? <laughs> you did literally the thing they want you to do. They don't care if you watched it angrily. They don't care if you write about it poorly online. You watched it. You shouldn't have fucking done that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is how that is how more of that thing gets made. If you don't want if you don't want Diablo Immortal, don't rage play it. Mm -hmm. If you don't want Netflix to make really bad adaptations of or really bad live action adaptations of anime, then don't watch Cowboy Bebop. Because you know how you know what happens when you watch Cowboy Bebop? They make Yu Yu Hakusho. The, the live action version of that. Yeah, stuff like that. Eh, that's a bit of a side tangent there. But Sorry, we'll, yeah. we'll get back, yeah. 
But uh, the first Overwatch game, Overwatch 1, or just Overwatch as it was known, mm-hmm. it was good. Yeah, There were times where you didn't yeah. like it near the end. You fell out, but... Yeah, I fell off. It was still a good game. I just was talking mad shit on it because I didn't have fun playing it anymore. Fair enough. Yeah, the, you and I would play re- it together. And- the reason I stopped playing it is because that game is just rage-inducing for me. I don't know what it is about that game, but it was rage-inducing. Yeah. I had to stop playing it for my own mental health because it made me so angry. Fair enough. That's probably for the best. But the characters are great. You like the characters? Yeah, the characters are great. If there was just a single player version of that game I, I probably would love it probably yeah and even though you fell out i enjoyed it for many years and you and i despite it being like a 40 dollar buy-in game mm-hmm. and then you could just play for free for years you and i still spent money on cosmetics i don't even want to know how much money i dumped on those stupid cosmetic loot boxes so yeah the game had loot boxes you could earn them in game you'd get free cosmetics out of them or if you didn't want to play to earn them or you weren't getting what you wanted, you could also spend money on loot boxes, buy them yourself. Well, sometimes the way you earned loot boxes was completely stupid. Like, you had to play just a ridiculous amount of time to get, like, one loot box. Yeah, it can feel like that. Yeah, like a few hours to get a single loot box. I remember, and I'm going to do a quick side tangent. I promise it'll be really quick. I remember they came out with, I forget what skin it was. They came out with a skin for Mercy that I really wanted. Mm. I really wanted to get this Mercy skin. And I, I probably... I'm ashamed to say this. I probably spent like $50 on loot boxes trying to get this skin for Mercy. And I got six copies of the same Torbjorn skin over and over. That was, it became a joke amongst my friends is that if there's a new skin that comes out, Zach's getting Torbjorn skins. <laughs> a char- Torbjorn was a character you didn't even play. No, I never played Torbjorn. I hated Torbjorn. Yeah, loot boxes. They were, uh... Widely not loved. People didn't enjoy loot boxes. People said, just open a store. Let us pay $5 yeah. for the skin we want so we can actually do that. Because your loot boxes, they're just gambling. And it's you shouldn't have it's, gambling. It's hyper-predatory game. gambling. Yeah, it's, it's hyper-predatory. It shouldn't be in your game. And uh, eventually they would remove the loot boxes in Overwatch 2 and replace them with worse things. But we'll get to that in a moment. Mm-hmm. But I also spent money on Overwatch 1. I didn't use anything that came out of loot boxes honestly though but i liked having all my characters have the same uniform so i bought the overwatch league tokens from time to time you would earn overwatch league tokens by watching the esports professionals play Mm -hmm. the game and you would just earn them and i i I earned a lot of skins for the characters and you know eventually i wasn't earning enough so i bought a few more tokens and i probably spent 10 to 20 dollars myself spent 10 to 20 dollars on a game that was basically free at that point you know I didn't mind it because I, I enjoyed the game. I thought the game was fun still. And then Overwatch 2 came out this year. Yay, Overwatch 2. Boy, I bet it was so great. I bet it had all the things that were that were super fun about Overwatch. And I bet it had more even more like new and fun characters. And they probably they probably like every every I bet like every couple months this year they came out with a new character for free. <laughs> So have you played any of Overwatch 2? No, you, I haven't. You've fallen out. You're, I refuse to play it. You're just not going to have fun with it. You're not going to... No. Why would you even want to get back anyway, knowing how scummy the company is? The How scummy the company is and how much that game makes me rage and how much I hate constant balancing and rebalancing of characters. Yeah, there's a lot Because of they came out with a new character, so they had to make that character OP so people would play the new character, which then makes means that they now have to rebalance everybody else. Oh, you're going to love what I'm going to have to say about Overwatch 2 then. Oh, I bet. So, Overwatch 2 came out a few... Yeah, two or three months ago at this point. Mm-hmm. So they got, Wasn't it supposed to come out at the beginning of this year? Uh, COVID screwed up everything. Yeah. Development is all screwed up. Overwatch 2 is marketed as a sequel. It, it, it's just an update. Yeah, it's just, it's it's not really Overwatch Two. It's just Overwatch the new coat of paint. They updated, I remember when it came out, people kept referring to it as Overwatch One Point Five. They updated the UI. The user interface is mm-hmm. a bit different. They updated some of the characters. They did record some new di- a lot of new dialogue. They they put a lot of work into it, but it feels very similar to Overwatch One, and not much has changed. And it's kind of hard to justify the two on the end there. It's just marketing, really. Yeah. There was supposed to be a uh, PVE element, the player versus... Yeah, I remember being actually kind of excited about that as when they announced Overwatch 2. As you just stated, if you had the ability to play a single player campaign without having to worry about different balancing things, you could probably have a lot of fun. Yeah. And that was supposed to be what Overwatch 2 included. But Overwatch 2 did not include that on release. Don't worry, it's on the roadmap. It's coming out eventually. Mm-hmm. 
But because that, well, I don't, th- I still don't think there's even a date on that. It's just it, eventually it's in the future. Whatever, it doesn't matter. It's not out now. Overwatch yeah. Two is out without the the main draw, which is like the biggest kick there. I remember, I remember you telling me about how the esports league was playing Overwatch Two before Overwatch Two was out. Oh yeah, that- but it was difficult because they wouldn't give anybody in the esports league access to Overwatch Two except when they were competing. So how the fuck are you supposed to practice it? Really ridiculous. It's like, okay, so uh, I realize that you guys are the professional baseball team. Um, you are not allowed to use baseball equipment. Here's a bunch of cricket bats. Go nuts. <laughs> yeah. not, a, not a bad analogy. Yeah, it was kind of ridiculous. There was something else that they added, which I think they may have added in Overwatch 1 right before it released, which was roll queuing. Oh, yeah. So instead of being able to just join a game and uh, play whatever hero you wanted, you had to specify what type of character you wanted. There were three categories. Nobody ever wanted to play healer or tank. Especially tank. In the original Overwatch, no one wanted to play tank. So they combined the two tank roles into one super role that people would want to play. And so now you can play the Giga Tank in Overwatch 2, and that's fine. What did they do? What? What is? Who? Which characters are Giga Tanks? Every tank, really. It- so, Ryan, so what, do they just give them more health? Yeah, all these characters have more health. They're tankier, they can output more damage, they can move faster. It, they're just more fun to play in general. But it also kind of changes the balance of the game, where if your tank goes down, if one tank character goes down now, that's your only tank character, now you don't have a tank, yeah. and that's kind of a problem too, so... I just miss, I miss the days of being stupid, where you had an entire team filled with you had an entire team of Reinhardts just all going, hello, yeah. back and forth at each other. Just be ridiculous. The game used to be a lot of fun, but then people... They, they just, then the fun police showed up. <laughs> I remember like joining a game at one point and the entire team was just Genjis and they all just like sat in a circle <laughs> yeah. and just like said Genji lines at each other. And I was just like, all right, I guess this is what's happening. And it was, it was actually really funny. Yeah. We're fighting an entire team of Bastions where they're just all going, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> and... You know, I, I loved it when it was just goofy stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I can understand them taking that out because, you know, maybe you don't want... If you're playing a game with your friends, maybe you don't necessarily want to show up into a lobby and it's literally nothing but Genjis and they're all just screaming, I need healing, over and over again. Maybe you don't necessarily want to be in a meme game. Yeah. But that that should still be an option. As Overwatch continued, the balances had to come in because some characters were insufferable. Now, they changed some characters, and for the most part, a lot of the characters were changed in beneficial ways. And then when Overwatch 2 came out, again, they reworked a lot of characters. You're complaining about Bastion. A lot of... Oh, Bastion had such a hard time because he was a stationary target, so they gave him more mobility in the sequel. They changed yeah, a lot they, of characters. his ultimate... Just in general, his gameplay was... His gameplay was, you find a position you want to set up at, and you would plant your feet, and you would just be a high-damage outputting character, but you couldn't move. Yeah. So you're you're a stationary character. Yeah, in a oh yeah, now you can game. move as a turret. Right. Which is weird. But I'm saying back in the day, nobody played Bastion at the high ranks. Abs the the worst character. No one would play him because it was a, a high mobility game and you, you have a character that has no mobility. Yeah. So they had to rework that character. And to be fair, a lot of the reworks they've done for these characters in the sequel have been good. Mm-hmm. From a gameplay perspective. Overwatch is actually really fun right now. The characters are in really good states. A a lot of people complained about too many shields in the game. So they removed a lot of shields in the game. And a lot of people complained about there being too many stuns in the game. So they removed a large amount of stuns. I will agree there were too many stuns and there's too many boops. Eh, boops, yeah. Well, uh, all tank characters now have a passive, so they're not affected by boops. So if you don't like being knocked around, you can play as a tank and they have a resistance to that. So... Hmm. The gameplay itself is tight, and the characters are very well designed. However... The however would probably be that they are adding new characters again. And that means the balance is all over the place. The balance is all over the place, and you don't actually get those new characters unless you buy the battle pass. We'll get to that. Okay, never mind. We'll talk about the characters first. So they added a bunch of new characters, and like always, they're cool characters. Here's a cute anime girl, Fox Spirit. Here's a cool brawler, Dami Mommy Tank. Arr, she's got a knife. She likes to hook you with a knife. They got a lot of characters, a lot of fun. But because they're introducing new characters, they can kind of be overpowered. They can kind of take over the game. They have to rebalance everything. 
So let me get into a, let me get into the specifics here. There was a character they added called Kiriko, who yes. has the ability to cleanse status effects. There previously was a character in the game called Roadhog. I'm sure you're familiar with. Yes. So Roadhog was a very powerful character. Can go around hooking people, shooting them, and he's he's pretty strong. But he's also kept in line by being vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Because if you, he doesn't have any shields. He doesn't have any barriers. He basically huffs a vape pen to yeah, heal. He's just a giant ball that runs around killing people. It's pretty good. It's pretty easy to incapacitate him by shooting him or sleeping him, or stunning him, or knocking him back. So the status effects are what kept him in line. And then they added a character that could cleanse status effects. And he took over the game, because now the one thing that kept him in check could be removed. Yeah. So that's the kind of balancing issues they have to deal with now. And a lot of characters can get wildly overpowered. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the balancing is no longer the tepid area it was. That's the side effect from adding all the new characters, is that... Some of the characters are frustrating to deal with. Yeah. But in general, I would say the gameplay itself is fine. They removed the maps that people didn't want. They added some new maps that people enjoy. And then, of course, they got rid of the predatory monetization with loot boxes. There's no more loot boxes. Yay, no more loot boxes. Finally, a company listening to its consumers. But you also no longer get things just by playing for free. What? Yeah. So they have a battle pass. Oh boy. Hey guys, remember Fortnite? Fortnite has a battle pass and that game makes bonkers money. From what I've heard, the the battle pass for Fortnite is actually a good deal. But the battle pass for Overwatch, from my personal experience, is not. Hmm. Tell me about it. It's bad. Because there are 30 plus characters in the game and you're unlocking things for specific characters. If you want a thing for your character... There might be one or two things in the battle pass for them. Oh boy. If you pay the $10 for the battle pass that month. Oh, it's a monthly battle pass. Well, technically bi-monthly. Every two months you buy a new battle pass for $10. And $10 isn't a bad price. I mean, if you want to keep supporting the game that you enjoy, $10 for Except every... Except that you're paying 120 bucks a year. 60 bucks a year, yeah. Yeah. $60 a year is not a bad price to ask for a game you might really be getting a lot of value out of so i guess yeah so yeah a battle pass would be fine unfortunately if you pay the ten dollars for a battle pass you get a lot of hot garbage there's quote 80 things in the battle pass and most of it is just faff fluff sprays and collectibles that don't do anything and skins for characters maybe you don't play yeah and i'm i'm guessing that like if you're playing as Farah and you want the Farah skin, that might be in like level whatever. Level 60. So you have to get to level 60 before the two months are up. And what if you're somebody that only plays this game on weekends with your friends, mm-hmm. but you want the Farah skin? You can't get it. Exactly. You have to buy the battle pass. It's not just enough to buy the battle pass. You have to actually play the game to level up to earn the things in the battle pass. Like a battle pass is fine if the items in the battle pass aren't character specific. Sure, that would definitely help. If the items in the in the thing aren't character specific, like it's it, you get to this point in the battle pass and you get a legendary skin for the character of your choosing, mm-hmm. or you get to this point and you get such and such amount of in-game store monies that you can use to buy a thing mm-hmm. in the in-game store. Yeah, but when it's a battle pass where it's like, oh yeah, this Pharah skin is at level ninety-eight. You're never going to be able to get the level to get the skin you want unless you actually play a lot. Yeah, unless this game is the game that you play. Don't worry, Zach. They thought of that. You can buy levels. Oh boy. How much do those cost? I think it's like 10 bucks for 20 levels. So, you know, 30 bucks. You know, pay 30 bucks on top of the $10 oh, battle pass. Just squeezing as much money out of you as humanly possible. Mm-hmm. And there's 80 tiers in the battle pass. Mm-hmm. But there's only like eight good skins. Yeah. So you're paying $10 for eight skins for characters you might not even play. Yep. The Battle Pass might have more value if they didn't take a bunch of skins and put them up individually for sale in the store. Because there's a separate store, too. Things on the Battle Pass aren't in the store, and things that are in the store aren't in the Battle Pass. There are two different purchases you have to make. I say two, but they're, they're, you have to buy each individual item in the store, so several different purchases you have to make. Uh... And you know how you and I were talking about some of these skins, you know, they're worth $5. These skins are $25. Oh my god. No joke. They're just like $25. And they have like a little tag on the end. It's 40% off. So I guess I'm supposed to assume it's a $50 skin. Wow. What a great deal. 
Yeah, it, it's just a ride. It's been a ride watching this unfold. It's, it's absolutely insane. And yes, you can earn some in, some of the in-game currency to make that a bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. But I think someone did the math on that and you're like, you're only able to earn like 50 cents in-game each week. So it's like you'd have to spend like so it's just two years grinding. It's just the same thing as Diablo Immortal, where in order to level up your character, there's like six different types of in-game currency and you only get two of them for free. And you have to use the rest. You have to buy with actual... In order to fully level up something, it will cost like just an uh, absurd amount of money. Basically, they've said that Overwatch 2 is a game that I can enjoy if I want to, but it's not made for me. I'm not getting any of the new skins or any of the new emotes or any of the new anything. I can just play the game that they give me and everyone else can enjoy the fun stuff. It's just incredibly disappointing having these things that are like... You, you have all these fond memories of playing this thing or playing this thing. And then... More of the same bullshit of just a company doing stupid corporate bullshit and ruining the gameplay experience. Mm -hmm. And having fun skins is part of the gameplay experience. I like having my characters wear their outfits. Like, like I said, I have my characters in Overwatch League skins. Mm -hmm. So I even, I personally don't even care, honestly. Like, if I'm, if I'm talking about it from my point of view, I don't even care. I'm not buying the battle pass. I'm not buying any of this crap in the shop. I'm still having fun, and I'm ignoring all the cosmetic stuff. Mm -hmm. And I would have liked to buy some of the new Overwatch League skins for the new characters, but they jacked up the prices on that too. And I'm honestly not even invested in watching the esports anymore because that, that's a whole other problem in itself I'm not going to get into. But I, I'm fine. I can, I can wear the default skins. I can put up with that. I think the breaking point for me was a few weeks ago where they introduced a character... In the battle pass. This is the first time they introduced a character. This is the first. Oh, I think I heard about this. It's the first time they've introduced a character that I do not get access to unless I grind to level 45 or just yeah. pay them the $10. Yep. They've gated the new hero, Ramatra, behind a paywall. So everyone else gets to play a new hero, and I don't. Great. You know how we were talking about balance being a problem? Yeah. Yeah, their balance is still a problem. When Ramatra came out, a lot of people thought, oh, he's pretty weak. And I thought, well, that's no big deal. If he's a weak character, that means I don't get penalized for not having him. Mm -hmm. But then they buffed him, and now he's, like, really powerful. So whoever has oh, the boy. whoever has the better Ramatra is the one team that wins. And I, I'm not allowed to have that character. Oh, boy. So that was pretty much the breaking point for me. Like, I've played Overwatch <sighs> almost religiously, weekly, for, like, five years. And I haven't played it in like three weeks at this point. I'm, I might just be done. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, hopefully... I'm trying to think about how to say this. I'm not hoping that you never go back to a game that you clearly did enjoy playing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I kind of hope you don't go back to it. The game is very addictive. I... Unless, they, unless they make some serious improvements to the game. I, I don't foresee that happening, though. Like they're getting... They're, they're making money hand over fist doing this. Yeah, they are. Probably. Everyone's complaining... Everyone is going online and being like, this is stupid, I hate this. And then still buying the battle pass and still spending money on this stuff. Every time I would start up that game, I would look at the store and go, wow, that's a nice new outfit for $25. That's ridiculous. I'm not going to buy that. Who would pay that much for it? And then I would play a game and I would see someone who had bought it just playing the game with that $25 yep. outfit. Yeah, exactly. The game isn't made for me anymore. It's for, some, it's for everyone else who wants to pony up a bunch of money. I have multiple times have bought, have like paid actual money for skins in a video game. Every single time with the exception of Destiny 2, it is because it's a game that I actively enjoy playing. And it's like, I think this skin is really cool. I enjoy playing this game. I'm going to spend actual money to buy the, like in Deep Rock Galactic, I have almost all the skins for that game. But that's because I freaking love Deep Rock Galactic. That what? is what that game is amazing. I've heard great things about that. I almost put Deep Rock Galactic on my list of best game or best games this year. We didn't play. I mean, we started playing that last year too. Yeah, wouldn't wouldn't have been a fan. Yeah, I I've played a lot. Well, they've they've done a bunch of really cool stuff. Oh, okay, Deep Rock. Cool. They've they've made a bunch of really cool like like DLCs and add-ons and things. I think most of the a, the DLCs have been free. Yeah, I don't think there's any DLC for that game that isn't free. I think it's all just like updates. Nice. But yeah, there's skins in Deep Rock Galactic, and it's like twenty bucks for a skin pack. And I'll buy it because I love that game. It's a great game and I don't have a problem throwing the company 20 more bucks for a product that I'm still enjoying a lot. Absolutely. But it's, again, that's a one-time purchase. Mm -hmm. That's a one-time purchase of 20 bucks and then I get those skins for the only four characters that are in the game mm -hmm. and then I never have to rebuy them again. 
It's not like, um, it's not a loot box. It just seems like a greater value for your money. Same thing with The Long Dark. I've played that game for years. Company's been great. I've had a lot of fun with it. They've released a bunch of free DLC. They just announced that they're, they're like a $20 expansion pack. I'm probably going to buy it because $20. I've been hearing some negative things about it, but that might, that's also in like Steam reviews. So do with that information what you will. Uh, I think my, my, my point is that it's a $20 for, a, like you get everything for $20. Yeah. So if you compare the value of that to what Overwatch 2 is trying to do, where it just, yeah. you pay... Well, there's, there's, well, they're not nickel and diming you. They're... Dollar and dollaring you. They're, they're dollar and... They're 20 and 50 dollaring you <laughs> yeah. into this. So, yeah, the uh, the monetization made for a lesser experience, but I was still able to put up with it. The poor balancing made for a lesser experience, but I was still able to put up with it. Some of the maps they came out with were fun. Not the push maps. I hated the push maps. New game mode. I didn't like it. But they came out with a bunch of new maps. I enjoyed those maps. They, they gated off some of the maps I like. That's kind of a problem too. But I was, I was still having fun. I was still it's, putting up with it until they started gating off the characters. Then I'm just kind of lost. I just lost interest. That was the breaking point for me. It seems like they're doing the same thing that a lot of other companies are doing. Of They're, they're weaponizing FOMO yeah. in, in their games. If you don't get if you don't get it now, you'll never gonna you'll never see it again. Play the game right now, because next week these maps are gone. Mm -hmm. It and that drives me absolutely insane. I hate it. That was one of the reasons I stopped playing Destiny Two because Destiny Two became a second job for me. I had to play it every single day, otherwise I would miss out on the daily and weekly rewards. Mm. If I don't play it every single day, I'm missing out on these rewards. So I have to play this game three to four hours every single day in order to get every single thing. Yeah. And if I don't do it, I'm going to miss out and I'm never going to get it again. And for Overwatch, even if you did play the game like it was your job, you still wouldn't get anything because yeah. you, you have to pay for it. You have to pony up for it. Pay us for the ability to unlock some of the garbage in game. Pay us for the ability to get things that were free in the base game. That's and this is one of the reasons why I no longer am excited for Diablo 4. I was there was a trailer for Diablo 4 at the Game Awards, and I was just like, eh, whatever. Like Blizzard sucks. Blizzard, Activision Blizzard is an awful company. I know. I know there are probably a lot of people that worked really hard on Diablo Four, but like, how do I know that you're not just gonna you're not gonna microtransaction me to hell? And the characters for Overwatch, I still really enjoy. I think it's always amazing to see what new interactions they add for the characters. So I'm probably gonna keep up with Overwatch. I'm still gonna pay attention to new things being released. I don't know if I'll ever play it again though. Yeah. If they come out with like an arcade series, an arcane series, like League of Legends got an arcane Netflix series. If Overwatch had something like that, hell yeah, I'd watch it. I love yeah. those characters. But I can't be bothered to play the game anymore. Right. That was one of the things I remember saying this. I, I know why they don't do it. But I remember saying this when the first Overwatch game came out and they had all those cinematic trailers. The 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 Bastion one was was amazing. Oh, God, it's so good. The Bastion one is just PTSD robot and it's amazing. It's, it's so an good. incredible short film. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying when they were making those that it's like, why doesn't Blizzard just do what they've always wanted to do, which is make a movie? <laughs> yeah. Like Blizzard should just make a movie. They're not going to because video games make more money than movies and music combined. You could still make twice. Money. Yeah. So yeah, they they know they know how to make money. And it's the thing that makes me really sad is that Blizzard and a lot of other companies are not about telling stories anymore or making a fun gameplay experience. They're not about trying to make a thing that people will enjoy. They're about how do we make as much money as fast as possible. Yeah. And that is just absolutely heartbreaking to me mm -hmm. because that's what happens. That's what happened with Overwatch. I feel like that's what happened with Callisto Protocol. How do we how do we make as much money on this product as fast as possible? Hmm. I it's it's ha it happens with so much stuff. And it's really heartbreaking to see this this thing that you remember fondly from your childhood or your adolescent or young adult years that you loved so much get reduced to just being a corporate shill. Yep. On the plus side, I, I'll, I will admit that Overwatch was almost an addiction for me at many points. And I actually had to take a, a sabbatical from playing that game to actually get some stuff done. Like mm -hmm. when I finished my New Vegas mod that I that I made, that I created. Mike has a new Ma New Vegas mod, by the way. You should download it. It's uh, really good. Yeah, it came out like a year or two ago. He, writes a, he wrote a really good mod. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you for the compliment. But my point is that that didn't get done until I had given myself the ultimatum to not play the game until it was done. I took a break from Overwatch so I could actually finish this project they wanted to work on. That's how much of an addiction it was for me. Yeah. I loved Overwatch. It's still a fun game. I still want to go back and play it. But the Overwatch I want to play, it feels like, in many ways, doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. 
So I guess, thanks Activision Blizzard, I'm probably going to be more productive from now on. Yeah, c- thank you very much. Thanks for ruining your game so I'm no longer addicted to it. No, I'm still addicted to it, but I can't play it. You know, you know, you know. We're going to have to put you on like a, like a withdrawal. <laughs> Like a, are we gonna have to give you like a like get, an, get Overwatch an Overwatch drip? patch? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to give you like an Overwatch drip. Mm-hmm. Oh, the characters in that game are so great. Uh, Jennifer Hale voices the cowgirl. Oh man, so many fun things about that game. How many games give you the option of playing as a space hamster, a gorilla from the moon too? Is another I, one. You know, Hammond's kind of fun, but I kind of wish Hammond was just straight up that robot, and he didn't have the ha- it didn't have a hamster in it. <laughs> the ham the hamster is what sells the character. I don't know about that. He draws in an audience. I don't know. I don't particularly care for that and also a small minor thing i feel like the character design team doesn't always talk to the animation team because if you saw Junkrat's new updated overwatch 2 look they toned down some of his eccentricities they wanted to focus on him being an engineer so they gave him engineer goggles his hair is no longer like all crazy on fire it's toned down a bit but he his hair has to be on fire. He's junk rat. He's insane. He's he is insane. And they, and they did keep that. They kept some of it, but they also wanted to emphasize that he's an, an engineer, a, a smart character. They wanted to make him more heroic, I guess, in that regard. Okay. But the animation team must not have gotten that memo because when you select junk rat now, his old animation was he'd hit a button and go, ah, <laughs> but now he hits the button and goes, <laughs> oh my god, he's insane. Okay, that's a bit much, but all right. 